Hi, everybody. I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com, and we are welcoming a special guest back, Mr. Landon Mayer. Welcome back, Landon. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So we had Landon on before. You can probably see the link on the screen. He was on here before talking about some of his favorite guide flies. Loved it. Great video. I'm sure it was well received simply because we're recording this back to back. <laughs> so we don't even know how well it went. But let's hope I didn't mess it up. It was out there. But we're going to change topics. We're going to talk about fly tying. Fly tying tips revolving around storage. Ooh, why storage? Just keeping it organized for those of us who are at home. And if your significant other doesn't tie and the kitchen table turns into an explosion and you have to clean it up or else, We've all been there. So this is a way to organize some of the materials that can just go everywhere. And starting out, it's going to be beans. Oh, perfect. Well, wait, don't give them, don't give them this yet. Hold on, we're just <laughs> HRing this now. So for all of you OCD tires out there, hang on for 10 seconds. We'll be right back sharing some tips related to fly time organization. All right, to tell all of you just a little bit about Mr. Landon there. He's a guide, Colorado, born, still lives there today. Yep. Um, you know, he's known with his fly tying and fly fishing books. He's got a ton of them. We'll talk about them in a bit. Umka Signature Tire, uh, you name it, he has done it. He's there. So he is definitely one of the, the mentors so many of us look up to, an ambassador of our sport. So thanks for all you do. Thank you. I Appreciate didn't have a chance that. to say that in the first one. So I wanted to make sure I said that this time. Thank you. Let's jump into this though. Fly yeah. tying. Uh, we're going to help people get organized. Right. They hopefully are not tying flies in bed. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell us, give us some tips for this. Stuff. Been guilty of that for sure. Yeah. In <laughs> bed, kitchen table. Yeah, oh, yeah. You name it. So when you're trying to organize, one of the biggest things that I've found to be a problem or a pain is the flies don't take that long. It's when you're searching for materials. All of a sudden, it's a two-minute tie and it's 30 minutes. You're like, this is crazy. So to start things off, beads. Beads drive me nuts. You know, it bounces off the table, gets on the floor. It's your last bead. You need it. And you're down there trying to find it with the magnet and bringing out the light on the iPhone. So what I like to do is grab these storage units, which I found at Hobby Lobby. They're round, and there's going to be six per container. Very small container, kind of rectangular shape. When you grab these, you can have, I've marked them on the top. These are slotted orange radiant tungsten beads from Umpqua. Okay. So the top ones are going to be your 1.5s, and then you screw that back on. Go to the next one, your 2.3s, screw that back on. And you can go all the way down to the 3.0s. And if you stack those, it's a great way to organize the beads to where they're not all over the place. And then if you have the little container, you make sure you can refill it reorganize it and you're ready to go. Oh, I love this one. I'm curious, whenever you buy these, does it come everything I'm looking at right now or is it just a single stack? Just like this. Everything comes as is. So you get each one of these stacks, six total in each container. My local Hobby Lobby store had them available. Perfect. Yeah. Hobby Lobby, if you are watching, we would love the sponsorship. So reach out to us. <laughs> come on down. <laughs> All right, number two, what do you got? Organizing materials. So let's say you're at a show, most importantly when I'm teaching a class and somebody's learning let's say the mini leech, and all of a sudden, can you tie the tube leech? All I need to do is grab the small fish pond pack, all the materials are inside, and then I can fit all of these packs up to 20, 30 flies inside the tailwater tying kit from fish pond. It's an awesome way to travel with a large suitcase, and again, your materials are at the ready. Mix them up, label them, you're ready to go. Ah, thank you, this is a great one. I'm gonna steal this idea. Um, I'm doing a lot of featured tire demos over show season. You'll all see me walking up the stage with these giant Ziploc bags. So Landon's got me beat there. I know a lot of people out there are beginning fly tires. One of my recommendations to beginners, don't get overwhelmed by all the fly tying patterns you see on Instagram, in the books. Just, just pick two or three and just stick to those, learn how to tie those flies. But I can absolutely see somebody saying, I want to learn how to tie the Paragon, buying all the materials for it, leaving it in that baggie. You're good to go. You can learn that fly then check it off and move on to something else. Exactly. I really like these. Yeah, great idea. And it, like you said, organizing the materials so you have that all set, all ready. You can move through. Most importantly, you're not spending 30 minutes finding the materials to do a two-minute time. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, perfect. All right, the third organizational tip. Before we share it, I'm going to pick his brain just a little bit. Sure. Can you talk about your tying space? Where do you tie your flies before you go guiding or fishing? Yeah, great question. Most of the time, it's in the office. Again, sometimes couch, football game, kitchen table. But I tie on a tie craft desk made by my friend Drew Allman. And the great thing about the desk is I have it center right in front of a window so you can see the beautiful landscape. 
And then next to that are pegboards for all the materials and some of the drawers so I can reach out and make sure I have everything at the ready. I have like six tying stations around my house. It's almost embarrassing. Now, we don't have a finished basement yet. And I'm hoping to have that tying station down there that, sure. that I call home. But yeah. there's also something about just my family around me, tying flies, oh, cool. enjoying the experience. Yeah. Hopefully my son's picking up on a few of these patterns sure. as he helps me tie them. There's something that's cool about that. But losing hooks, yeah, it's not very good. Not fun. I don't know. Is that our transition into number three? What do you got next? For number us? three, exactly. You don't want the hooks in the sock <laughs> where your son and your daughter are stuck to the floor. No, and we've all no. been it, right? Yeah. Don't want that to happen. So organizing hooks, just like beads, big pain. Very difficult to do. It brought me back to my childhood. And the reason I say that is love trading baseball cards. So again, my favorite store outside of the fly shop, Hobby Lobby. Go into Hobby Lobby, pull up the baseball card. Inside the baseball card binder, you're now storing your favorite Tiemco and Umpqua hooks. <laughs> you like can it. go through each one of these pages, organize it by the specific type of hook that you'd like. The package goes inside the sleeve. You can close it up, make sure it's all organized, ready to go. Ooh, put that's a, a slick one. Yeah, put your cool sticker on the front like the Regal there and you're ready to rock. And then the second for hook storage or placement is going to be the packs from Umqua Feather Merchants. I love a lot of their new X-Series, the Pertagon jigs. Put it on a small carabiner and next thing you know, you're storing about 30 to 40 different selections of hooks. Ooh, these are great tips. I love it. And I think you hit the main thing right there. You got a spot form. They're going to be easy to find. Right. Um, I, I'm kind of the same as you. I love to keep my hooks organized. Right. I tend to think, here's my dry fly hooks. Yeah. I have my nymph hooks. I have all my jig hooks because there's so many of those now. Exactly. Streamers, salmon. You just have all those different locations. Right. I love that you have these different places that you can kind of keep sure. them. You know you can grab them. You're ready to go. I know people are going to want to reach out. How can they best contact you? Yeah, thanks for that, Tim. So through the website, the best way, landandmareflyfishing.com. Go to the home page. There's a contact page there that you can ask questions. If you'd like to book a trip, information about some of the tips we went over today. That sounds great. And I did allude to the fact that you've written a ton of books. How many books are you up to right now? Uh, this The last book was six. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Thank you. A ton of work. Um, will you just briefly tell some of the titles, and let's, let's talk a little bit about your last one at the very end. Yeah. You, the title started out, first one was going to be How to Catch the Biggest Trout of Your Life. And that was a cool book because it talked about the migration of fish, when to hunt fish, you know, matching their food supply. Awesome. 2007 is when that was published. Following that was Sight Fishing for Trout. Colorado's Best Fly Fishing and 101 Trout Tips. And that was a collection of really exploring the state of Colorado and beyond. And I'm a trout hunter. I love that visual concept of finding the target, cast into it. They don't always take, as you know. Yeah. And then the last two books have been The Hunt for Giant Trout. And then the most recent one is Guide Flies. Easy to tie patterns for tough trout. And as you know, with your tying book, it's difficult to make the book. But once it's complete, there's so much given information inside. It really was a pleasure. Yeah, and I heard maybe 20 patterns in the book. 20 patterns. Other tires, other flies. Yes. Some of our favorites from you. Sure. Perfect. And I'm guessing they can buy that on your website and all the other major retailers. Absolutely, yeah. Through the website, you can go to your local fly shop, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and Stack Full Books. Right. That sounds great. Thank you again Thanks, for coming on. Appreciate it, Sam. Hey, thank you to all the viewers. Thanks for watching this. We really do appreciate it. If you like this video, click that like button down below. If you have any questions, you know how to reach out to Landon. If you want to email me, you can do so at tkamisa at gmail.com. Please feel free to leave some questions or comments down below. One more time, thank you for coming on, okay. and I'll see all of you soon.